Yo, what's poppin', Fickers? It's your boy, uh, Alex. I want to introduce a brand new podcast, The Great Scientist Podcast. It's put on by our boy, Henry, and his co-host, Roisin. This is a really fun episode because they combine history, humor, science, smut, and Shrek. Quite frankly, almost everything we stand for. I think they also help prove our point that you may think there's a fanfic of everything out there, Especially things that would be fun and clever, but sometimes that's not true. Sometimes there's just smut. So much smut. Please stay tuned all the way through so you can hear them tell you all about their new podcast. Thanks for listening. Hello, fake suckers. Welcome to the internet's best fan fiction podcast. <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm sure Alex or Ryan already explained in the intro that us and a full army of other podcasters are filling in for them while they're busy building a functional death ray, blah, blah, blah. So this <laughs> week, you get us two from the Great Scientist podcast, which may or may not have launched by the time this episode came out. I'm going to hope may, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I'm Henry, the same Henry from England that they always mention. Then they always have to mention Henry Henry Cavill afterwards. <laughs> I guess it's the only Henry they know from England. Uh, well, anyway, joining me is uh, Roshin. Hello. Hello. I know science stuff. Okay, let's get to start with the question that will hopefully pad this episode up by like 10 minutes. Please Roshin, bring on what's... the padding. <laughs> Roshin, what's your experience with fan fiction? Um, I have pretty limited experience with fan fiction. Like, honestly, the only fan fiction I've read is like usually quite gross. So I've read the um the probably infamous uh, Picard and uh, Elrond from Star, <laughs> Star, uh, like um erotic fan fiction. Let's say I only know that exists because of Crack dot com. But we we listen to uh, internet historian do like the immortal as well, didn't we? Oh, true. Yeah, my immortal yeah. and. Uh... Um, the other one, <laughs> whatever that was uh, called. What, is it, what was that, Candle Jack or something? I don't know, even know. I have no idea what the name was. And yourself, what's your experience with fan fiction? I'm like yourself. I'm not really into fan fiction. But like, it's weird. Now that I think about it, in primary school, right? Yeah. I wrote a fan fiction as one of my assignments. Oh my God, what should you write it off? <laughs> well, they, they asked us to like write some kind of like adventure story or whatever. And for some reason, I just like, I basically wrote fan fiction for Kingdom Hearts. Oh, okay. That's yeah. So you know what Kingdom okay. Hearts is, yeah. You know the yeah, one I know of it. Yeah, the yes. Disney, all the Disney characters, right? Yeah, for uh, the listeners who don't know, it's basically a Japanese. Imagine the most emo Japanese video game characters put into the <laughs> world of Disney, <laughs> and uh, with, with a story that makes absolutely no sense. And that's what you get. That's Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> so was the fan fiction any good? I, I'll be honest with you, I don't really, I'm don't. i a really bad writer, I still am, and I don't remember anything about this. That's a shame, that would have been a fun one to dig up. Uh, yeah, beyond that, uh, like you yourself, I read some of the gross one, like, you know, the one where Slender Man plows his familiars, <laughs> you know. Yep, of course. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, the biggest exposure to fan fiction is from listening to this podcast. It's a really good podcast. I'm not just saying because they invited me to be a guest, but it's really fun. Like, I mentioned it to you ages ago, haven't I? Yeah, I've listened to a few yeah. episodes. I really yeah, like the yeah. Skyrim one. <laughs> <laughs> I still love the fucking uh, Nicolas Cage National Treasure meets... Um, what's the name of the guy from Taken? Uh, Liam Neeson? Yeah. Have you listened to that one? I haven't heard that one. Oh, it's incredible. It's still one of my favorite uh, fictions they read. Wasn't the one with Bill Clinton and Spongebob? Oh, that's beautiful. It's okay, Spongebob. This is what independent art should look like. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a publisher? <laughs> this is the promise of the internet realized. Everyone can publish their own beautiful works of art. <laughs> okay, so we haven't explained what our podcast is about because we're going to plug it at the end. And in the intro, they probably explain briefly what we are. But our podcast is basically we talk about famous scientists, quote unquote, <laughs> of history. Quote unquote. Especially the, the further back you go in history, the, the less of a scientist they are. For instance, one of our, well, three of our episodes cover <laughs> the uh, the Greek philosophers, 
<laughs> Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Yep. <laughs> and the former two, I I wouldn't really call a scientist on for the purpose of the podcast we are. So my fiction that I'm reading today is about those three. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so people who don't know, there's just three really creepy Greek guys. <laughs> yeah, creepy old, <laughs> creepy old Greek beardos, uh, big fans of slavery. and uh... <laughs> They don't like democracy. No, they weren't particularly democratic. No. Also no. founders of philosophy, but... Um... Yeah, creepy beardos is how I remember them. <laughs> this is going to really offend uh, the co-host Ryan, because apparently him and his sister are really, really into ancient Greek stuff. Sorry. <laughs> I like some of them, but I don't like uh, Plato or Socrates very much. And I don't like the expression natural slavery. <laughs> natural? I don't even know that one. I think that was Aristotle's. <laughs> well, what does he know? He thinks he was come from, come from the mud. Oh, we're not getting into eels again. <laughs> we have a lot of... We, we've covered a lot about eels. If you want to know about European eels, we're the place to go to. What's your fan fiction called? Okay, uh, so the title of my fiction is called... Oh, this is going to be hard to say. Uh, it's called Plato Christotele. It, it's, a, it's a bit of all three of them. You know, Plato, uh, uh, Socrates, Socrates, and Aristotle. And Aristotle, yeah. Plato ran through cobblestone streets looking for his teacher. A new set of robes and a loaf of bread tucked under his arm. Where is that damn loon? He thought with a fond <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> ah, there he is. Socrates! Plato yelled. Gaining the attention of his younger, much poorer master, as well as a small group of people he was talking to. Before Plato could continue to his friend, a dainty hand with a firm grip wrapped around his forearm. Aristocles! Uh, <laughs> then it says, like, it says parentheses, like, Plato's real name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, is I, that didn't, true? Well, I didn't know that. It's true, yeah. It's apparently Plato's real name is uh, Aristocles. Yeah, but uh, we all know Plato is actually a nickname anyway, because it. Uh, yeah, it means like Flash or something. Yeah, you know, sort of. because of his big forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so more of like an insulting observation than a nickname. <laughs> the younger man beamed, several books in a bag slung under his shoulder. Plato held back a sigh as he watched Socrates shrug and continue on with his conversation. What is it that you want, boy? And I've told you time and time again you are to call me Plato. The younger, <laughs> the young boy let a coy smile touch his lips before replying. Well, I was just wondering. Perhaps, since I've been excelling in my studies, I could become your second in command. Your go-to man. I could be much more of your like, though. His go-to man. Like, yeah. W- wow, that's really of the time language. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Asian Greeks, you know, you know, they always say the past is a, it's like a different country. They do things differently there. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but he's speaking American jargon, apparently. <laughs> uh, you don't know. Have you been to ancient Greece? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, never mind then. No questions. <laughs> no. <laughs> So tell me of this chance meeting between some guy and some other guy. Plato stares solemnly into the distance. Aristotle, no, you are being the most supreme of youthful men, only good for intercourse. Now go on, I came into the square to speak to my friend. This, the, that sentence made no sense to me, sorry. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it That's now, gibberish, it still makes but it no sounds sense. rude. <laughs> yeah. That's the important thing. <laughs> Must be ancient, it's all ancient Greek to me. <laughs> noise <laughs> that's the one time you get to use that joke this podcast <laughs> oh you should have been with me when I went to holiday in Rome my friend oh <laughs> <laughs> everything's like should, should we go to this place well you know we're, we're not in England <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's called subversion of expectations Plato didn't check to make sure Aristotle went away before he rushed to Socrates Gleaming as much of the last bit of the conversation he could. As Socrates' company slowly dispersed, Plato was just about to ask his master to a picnic. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> They're trying to make this so gay. <laughs> okay, it just says, uh, it opens with like, uh, uh, the conversation apparently that they were having. Well, that's ignorant. <laughs> A cow is just as another cow because they both look the same, not because okay. of one perfect copy. Ah, oh, this is this is giving me flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, come on, we all know you love like ancient philosophy. Get out of here if you're a Platonic idealism. I just don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it continues on. Don't worry. Um, 
A haughty voice called from behind Plato, whose face dropped at the insistent voice. Uh, apologies, master. Aristotle is, and it gets cut off. Okay. And then Aristotle continues like, Aristotle is c- tired of hearing the same recycled garbage. Come on, soccer cheese. Cows <laughs> are each matter. All of the essence of cow structure, but not all the same. They are each their own and each look the same by their matter. Therefore, they are all cows. Oh, dear. <laughs> I mean, I can't fault it on being like somewhat philosophically accurate, but Please yeah. make it stop. Yeah, but and plus ten points for Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> he got him. No, uh, Socrates retort. Socrates pursed his lips at the young one. Well, by that logic, I suppose your mother to be a cow as well, since she looks just like one. And then Mike drops. Oh snap! I guess. <laughs> anyway, well, pretty much. Plato, Plato responds like, "Oh, master, that is the most ill of scorching heats." <laughs> so uh, it continues saying like. Aristotle said, whatever, one way or another, I will have you and your school in the palm of my hands. And then he just grumbles and walk away. And then he mumbles, Plato, more like that fat old man's Play-Doh. Got him. <laughs> this is just so <laughs> bad. I-, I love it. You know, Plato, more like bag of testicles. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> you know, the only one I read um, that I, I, I was considering reading before I found this one was... Um, it's about uh, the ghosts of Plato coming back to Earth to help Aristotle succeed. Okay. But it was really shit. They just go watch a really crappy play. And then Plato just said, I want to steal a goat. Uh, they steal the goat, but that goat was supposed to be sacrificed to Dionysus. So okay. everyone's really pissed because they're like, we're not going to have any wine. And then he's like... Uh, well, I'm going to raise this goat to be a great leader, and I shall call him Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex, like... Alex ruled over Greece prosperously for 1,500 years. <laughs> oh, but that one has the really terrible joke of like, um, why would Dionysus want another goat? They're like, I don't know, maybe he wants to ride the goat around while drunk. It's like, <laughs> why would he do that? Well, he'd do it for fine. And it's like, what do you mean about great vines? And it's like, it's just a forced pun about vines. I like the part about Dionysus being pissed drunk riding around <laughs> in a ghost. Why would well, they that's... ruin that joke? That's a wonderful image. <laughs> Plato, being shocked, started apologizing. He said, forgive me, Master Hias, but was stopped when Socrates let out a laugh and clapped his hand on his back. Not to worry, dear Plato. I remember a young lad, not like unlike him, many years ago. He would wade through the streets and try to argue with my theories. And look at him now. Plato tried not to smile, but couldn't help it. You are right, master. I should admit, however, that my reason for being here is not to argue, nor validate your teachings, but to ask your company in the gardens. Socrates g- grinned at the student's chivalry. Certainly, my boy. Is that we- all we are then? Theory and numbers? Plato asks, eyes showing concern and confusion. Socrates looked to his student and held the side of his face. No, no, my dear Plato. You are earth and blood, and sun and moon, and stars and heavens. Plato closed his eyes and nodded in his new comfort. Two beady eyes washed from a bush only meters away. <laughs> Aristotle frowned at Socrates' new robes. Plato never made him any new robes. Granted, he could afford as many robes as he pleased, but still. Aristotle's frown only deepened when Plato began leaning closer and closer to his teacher. Aristotle, if you are so intent on watching, then why do you not join us? Came Socrates' voice. Oh, why did they write <laughs> Twilight except with like three philosophers? <laughs> it's literally like a horrible love triangle with a bunch of beardos. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone knows how that would go in real life anyway it's just like you'd sit down with Socrates and it's like what is love and it's like oh god don't start can we just have a nice picnic <laughs> ah but what is a picnic and what is nice <laughs> I don't know anything tell me your answers I know nothing except that you are wrong <laughs> well it's very easy to criticise <laughs> one two Aristotle fell out of his hiding spot in surprise 
As if I would want anything to do with you, you buffoon, Aristotle yelled, then ran off. Plato fell back on the grass, rubbing his hands over his face. Master, how must I deal with such a student? How do I reach these kids? <laughs> <laughs> that was out about me. Sorry. That's much more emotionally impactful. Uh, Plato asked, peeking through his fingers to see his teacher. Socrates grinned. In the same manner that I deal with you, he, he told the younger man, leaning down to reach his student. The oh, end. God. <laughs> That's it, the end. Ooh. <laughs> that was really bad. It was just a lame, like, is there a part two or part three? N- uh, nope, nope, it, there isn't. It was, it was written many years ago, and unfortunately there was never a follow-up. That's a shame, because that seems like they had the love triangle fairly well established mm-hmm. there. Maybe it's up to us to continue the ban- uh, hold the banner and continue this legacy. This fiction was written by uh, a user called One Black Sheep on Archive of Our Own. Oh, and I... <laughs> it was dedicated to a person called, with the username, Oh God, why did I even think this was a good idea? <laughs> and, and the dedication uh, has a sentence saying, To my beautiful pal, to my loving child, to my sweet summer breeze, to my ultimate skeletal death heathen. This is your story. It started off quite poetic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, do you want to talk briefly about what your subject is? Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went with Einstein. If oh, anyone okay. thinks of a scientist, they probably think of Einstein. And I figured it'd be the most fan fiction written about him, just because he's kind of the most popularly visible scientist. Uh, so I'll read the titles, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, Shrek plus Albert Einstein. <laughs> oh, no. I actually saw this when I was looking through. <laughs> then there's Albert Einstein's journey to Titanic. Albert, or sorry, Einstein's <laughs> last theory. And of course, Bertie and Gandhi. A love story. Bertie <laughs> being... Uh, it's about Einstein and Gandhi uh, falling <laughs> in love. Because of course. So, yeah. so I'll flick through them. I think most of them are quite short. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is basically a paragraph of text from Wattpad, so you know it's good. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, because this is fucking foul. Mmm, <laughs> daddy. No, <laughs> Albert no. Einstein. What the fuck? That's the first sentence. <laughs> it's, the first, it's the first sentence. Mmm, <laughs> daddy. Albert Einstein moaned, his eyes shut tight from the pleasure as Shrek inserted his hard layered <laughs> onion inside the smart boy. Mmm, daddy, calculate me. Albert moaned loudly, his hands gripping onto the bed sheets. Don't worry, I'm going to subtract you so hard, Shrek moaned while a smirk was plastered across his bumpy green skin. Shrek thrust his hard onion deeper, <laughs> driving Albert crazy with pleasure. The daddy harder, Albert moaned, biting down on his bottom lip. Shrek obeyed what he said and trust harder and harder each time, making Albert a moaning mess. I just want to say, if you only if you call down <laughs> yeah. onion once, it could be a typo. Twice, there's no mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was very intentionally written. And also, <laughs> Einstein being one of the smartest men alive, and they use basic arithmetic for the for the metaphors. <laughs> Yeah, I really like that too. It's like, okay, I'm going to write a story about Einstein, but I know nothing about Einstein. What's the really hardest thing I know? Subtraction. Uh, Soon Shrek was reaching his climax. I'm going to come, Shrek moaned rather loudly. (laughs) What are you doing in my swamp? Shrek moaned as he ejaculated into the smart boy. B-O-I. Why does it keep going smart boy? (laughs) I don't know. Actually, I misread that. It's smart boy. Smart. <laughs> Even the first time, like. Uh, it was smart boy in both cases. <laughs> it, it is a literary device. Mmm, <laughs> Albert moaned loudly as he felt Shrek's warm liquid exploding inside him. <laughs> both lay down in the bed exhausted from what they just did. Shrek looked over at Albert, his chest going up and down, trying to catch a breath. Good night, Shrek said as he pulled the blankets on top of him. Night, Albert answered, dressing his head in the crook of Shrek's neck. Quite beautiful. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, well, actually, I didn't realise there there is a part two. Oh, no, 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 no. But because of how fan fiction works, there is no part two. It's, oh. 
am open to suggestions. This is basically <laughs> going to be a bunch of one shots, so I need ideas. I was thinking of doing a Peppa Pig v. Barry B. Banson. You like jazz? But I don't know if I should, because I'm probably going to kill myself halfway through writing it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, again, so... again like Einstein like if you put any scientist there or even like a basic math teacher it would still have worked I think that was written to be provocative and that kid didn't really want to write about um, <laughs> Einstein and Shrek boning <laughs> at least like uh, at least say a line like uh, I'll, I'll square your MC after this <laughs> uh, at least that would have been specific I mean that's quite good <laughs> yeah exactly you know what I mean <laughs> so it was written by Francis is my life, and they have exactly one fan fiction, so that was what they needed to write, apparently. Oh, so. <laughs> Impressions? Um, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could have done without that, to be honest. So I'm going to skip the uh, Titanic one, because it's really the title's more fun than the story itself. <laughs> okay, go for it. Okay, oh god, it's more filled. So this is actually, it's got, it's on fan fiction, so we're on a higher grade of fiction here. Like, <laughs> we've moved up from Wattpad. <laughs> and this is a story called Einstein's Last Theory, a heart-wrenching tale of Albert Einstein's last moments and words for the nurse that loved him. It's Aww. quite nice. Albert Einstein lay on the bed dying. <laughs> he whispered to his nurse in German, spelt with a J. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. You know you want to suck on all 200 IQs of this bitch. Oh but all, he, all she heard was, Come, Sean, baby. Weissen sie, we, sie wollen auf allen uh, 200 <laughs> IQ von dieser Hunden saugen. Sausen. Did Ugh. you make that up? No, it's actually there. I oh, think no. Something to the effect of eat my dog dick, I think. Gross. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I might well, that, but I'm going to check what that word means in case I just made it up. Um, uh, what a beautiful language. Translate. It did, in fact, say suck. <laughs> 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 the verb was suck. <laughs> <laughs> One of the nice aspects of German is they stick the verb at the end in many sentences, so you never know uh. quite, quite what's being done to... Uh, the body part until you see the verb at the end so uh, <laughs> ch- cheers sentence <sighs> however this particular nurse had a fondness for fondling the elderly she especially what? enjoyed the smart ones she ripped his co- cold corduroys corduroys i guess they meant uh off and sorry, and grabbed at his wrinkly and dried up wiener schnitzel <laughs> She placed his meaty cloaker <laughs> into her co- into her coke hungry mouth. Well, I'm just vi- saying, I really appreciate this more because at least there's reference to his German heritage. Oh, it gets better. This is um, like this is quite detailed if poorly spelled. <laughs> <laughs> and so she placed his meaty cloaker in, into her coke hungry mouth and created a vacuum in order to cons- conserve his mass. <laughs> okay see see this is what i'm talking about this is how you write a rubbish fan fiction it's specific it's revolting uh it's <laughs> and referential <laughs> and referential yeah see i'm glad you read the shrek one first because this is guy is showing the other person how it's done her theory of dictativity stated that he was getting hard as fuck his pubic hair looked exactly the same as the hair on his head. <laughs> down, <What>? to every... <laughs> yeah. down to every crazy tuft and curl. It was almost as if his penis was a miniature version of himself. Uh, homunculus, <laughs> I guess. Gross. Oh, suddenly, okay. suddenly his penis began to speak as well. <laughs> <laughs> the voice emanating from his urethra was filled with penal passion. It asked in English, remarkably... How's about a nice sucking? <laughs> the nurse reacted with both shock and delight. She quickly wrapped her lips around the wrinkly kibasa. Okay. Einstein's penis suddenly got a lot harder, at the speed nearly exceeding E equals MC squared. Amazing. Amazing indeed. This caused the formation of a gam star in the nurse's mouth, <laughs> and she was overtaken by pleasure. Wow, I am very impressed by that exponential growth of his natural log. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too um i'm gonna skip all of that because it's gross but there's a lot of gross near the end and i'm feeling we need to get the final paragraphs as well okay so they have sex because they're already having sex that's the entire point of the story 
Um, he struggled to lift himself up into the bed, so the nurse helped him overcome the forces of gravity. She then assisted him in removing his shirt, revealing his saggy his saggy nip <laughs> and and a swastika tattoo on his left pectoral. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Wait, you're Jewish. not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do this. Uh, on his other pectoral <laughs> sat the phrase D Dean Nazi Hitler Jew. On his middle <laughs> on his middle pectoral <laughs> there was a small tattoo of a smaller pectoral. What the fuck, mate? <laughs> the nurse then clumsily tried to crawl on top of him, breaking his brittle necken. Necken is German for rib. I'm very passionate about German is added in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to straddle his magnificent wiener, <laughs> but its length was ma- made us a difficult proposition. She grabbed her standard issue medical grappling hook and rose <laughs> <What>? high, up- <laughs> and Wait, rose high above. <laughs> she grabbed her standard issue medical grappling hook. Mm-hmm. She then she then proceeded to drop down onto it, Mission Impossible style. <laughs> On dum, she dum, didn't dum, slow dum, her dum, descent dum, at dum, all. Dum. This kind of non-linear acceleration caused her to land on his penis at a very high speed. This caused her internal organs to all rupture simultaneously. <laughs> the obvious sexiness of this act caused Einstein to immediately succumb to pleasure and explode with the force of a black roll. Okay. What? I don't know. He yelled in pleasure, screaming, Fick ich nie bis zum Ende der Staffel, uh, sex der Bing Bang Z. Uh, what does that mean? I haven't uh, something about seeing and fucking someone to the end of the Big Bang or something. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes my a lot German of sense. is not great. <laughs> and was dead, so she was dead. A doctor ran in to see what all the ruckus was, <laughs> and witnessed a nurse, a nurse hemorrhaging from her vagina on the dead Albert Einstein. Oh. The doctor, the doctor asked, "You know who this is?" What he say before he die? She looked at him and said, and say, Zimbabwe. And she exploded into a star. Who's what, then? What? 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 Zimbabwe? Yeah, she said Zimbabwe. Uh, is this like, it, it, hopefully it's not a racist thing. Yeah, if this is right, I mean, admittedly, this fought sticker on like Einstein is probably a bit racist. So sorry. It's at least the rest of it's filthy. <laughs> uh, but then... She wasn't really dead, and she say to doctor, I don't speak her German shepherd. Wait, why and is the English getting more and more broken as we... It's, as we... it's also incredibly misspelled at the end. Like, there's a lot of misspelling the whole way through, but it's getting quite unreadable towards the end. Wait, wait, do you think the, like, the the author, like, came, like, two-thirds into the thick, and, the, like, he or she just, like, oh, gotta finish this crap, I need to clean this mess up. I'm relatively confident this was written drunk based on the writing at the end. Because, like, Adam, then, she really was dead. Then Einstein, then Eichstein said, Bazinga. The end. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> okay, so that was incredibly offensive and horrible. But you can see the attention to detail. Yes, apart um, from spelling, because you know you have spell check. You, <laughs> it's the best. It's the best fiction we've read so far. <laughs> By mile, <laughs> yeah. So this is sh- this is shorter. Uh, it's called Bertie, I guess Albert. So Bertie and Gandhi, a romance. So I'm going to assume people know who Gandhi is. He um he was an Indian rights activist, and so there's two chapters of this. So if you want to finish it, feel free. I really don't. <laughs> we'll give After... you the taster. <laughs> exactly. This is the uh, this is the free sample that they give away on Amazon. So, oh, should I have an attribute to the previous author? Ideally, yeah. So the author has written exactly one story as well. So Kirby two one one two. Okay. I'm not going to say thank you for writing that, but <laughs> thanks for putting in that much effort. Okay. Attribution done. So let's get back to. Um, Bertie and Gandhi. After having completed his works on relativity and quantum mechanics, Albert Einstein needed a break. He had had enough physics and decided to travel to India to have a little fun. Einstein (laughs) was fascinated. (laughs) Einstein, yeah, oh no, indeed. Einstein was fascinated by this foreign country. He visited many places far and wide, enjoying the best of holidays. 
One day he noticed, it, noticed a mass of Indians approaching in the street. He discovered it was a peaceful demonstration against injustice. In the middle of orange robes, Einstein witnessed Gandhi, their spiritual leader. Einstein couldn't help but notice his flamboyant white robe and his fiery orange skin. Okay. He felt strangely hot inside. <laughs> he was confused. He was a married man, yet he was not unmoved by the father's charms. What's happening to me, taught Einstein. Am I turning? <laughs> when, what? When Gandhi was close to him, he pulled him apart. The Mahatma instantly recognised a famous physicist. Namaste, Albert. <laughs> Gandhi, I must talk to you. Gandhi was being tugged at by fellow Indians. Worry not, my lamb. Come and see me tonight at my village hut. <laughs> um, the night... Yeah. I, I'm not hot. entirely sure about all those references, but okay. Uh, so d- the night came, and with it, Albert at Gandhi's residence. When he opened the door, Einstein couldn't help but notice Gandhi's tight garments delicately showing his body. Einstein went straight to the point. Gandhi, I must tell you how I feel. He thought a moment. Oh, no. If you were the sine x squared to my cos x squared, then together we'd make one. Oh, no. So that's a trigonometric identity. Uh, sine x squared plus cos x squared equals to one. So fair play for having an accurate equation. Cool. Gandhi chuckled. He liked being picked up by boys. What? Does this, uh, well, he, I think he was bisexual, possibly. I did look that up. Okay. But I'm not sure he liked being picked up by boys, is how he put it. <laughs> Does this mean what I think it means, Bertie? Yes, and that dress would look even better dropping towards the floor at 9.8 meters per second per second. Oh, you are the chutney to my samosa. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Gandhi let his chawani slip to the floor and leapt towards Einstein. Their tongues intertwined and locked while Gandhi rubbed Einstein's moisture and heat-seeking venomous python of love. <sighs> venomous python of love. Fuck. Amazing. Gandhi pressed more and more on Einstein until Einstein could wait no longer. Oh, my hash, Violate me like the British violate your rights. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> That's so horrible. That is so horrible. It's true, but... <laughs> it's true, but it's not a chat-up line. Do you see, oh. People say stupid things when they're in the heat of the moment. Yeah, that's you know. pretty bad. I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> listeners, especially if any of you are Indian or have any sense of decency and morality. And by Vishnu, he did. Gandhi savagely tore Einstein's clothes and, being satisfied to see Einstein's love ladle fully erect, penetrating him with such vigour that they both reached their peak quickly and simultaneously. <laughs> uh, basically, one of the things that uh, Alex and Ryan mentioned is uh, simultaneous orgasm is on the bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that actually kind of makes sense because that is kind of a cliche of crap writing. Yeah. <laughs> I really wish I re-listened to their like their, their list of cr- uh, criteria because it would be really could play useful bingo. right now. Exactly. <laughs> Einstein lay next to Gandhi, their arms sleepily around each other. They glistened from sweat and semen, but they didn't care. They were happy and knew that many more sulfurous episodes were to come. Sulfurous? Sulfurous? Why That's sulfurous? A- that's revolting. Sulfur smells like <laughs> rotten eggs. And, and it's kind of oh, wait. That makes, that makes a lot more sense now that you mention it. Oh, my God. That's rancid. <laughs> Although I have to admit, violate me like the British violate your rights will stick in my head for a long time. <laughs> so um, what are your impressions on that story? Uh, I, uh, it was interesting. Yeah, I liked the, I liked the bit with the trigonometry in it. That, that I was thought, nice. I thought the this author put a lot more care and attention than the first one, but also a lot more racist. Um, so I guess it's like really that's all the um, that's really all the Einstein fan fiction I want to cover. Okay. There is an addendum I guess I want to make, and I'm not reading out the whole thing because it's awful. Uh huh. Basically, that person was Einstein. Where someone makes like a really dumb and ignorant article and like an argument, and then at the end, and that young man's name was Albert Einstein. What? Yeah. So there's like a really dumb, a really dumb like Facebook comment basically I've got in front of me saying, "Someone says to a professor, does cold exist?" The professor answers, "What kind of a question is that? Of course, cold exists. Have you ever been cold?" And then the young student answers. In fact, sir, cold does not exist. According to the laws of physics, what we consider cold is, in fact, the absence of heat. It's like, yeah, duh, okay. Um, 
and then it's like it goes on to sir does does it evil exist and then the professor says of course it exists as i mentioned in the beginning we see violations crimes and violence anywhere in the world and those things are evil but the student says sir evil does not exist just in the previous case evil is a term which man has created to describe the absence of god's presence in the hearts of man after this the professor bowed his head and didn't answer back the young man's name was albert einstein what the fuck it's a way of like signing off and a really dumb argument as like being authoritative it's like yeah well that liberal professor got owned by a long, young student, and that student was a big old smarty pants called Einstein. Fucking liberals, eh? <laughs> but, <laughs> so yeah, that was dumb, and that's a, that's another uh, fictional thing about Einstein. I guess is worth mentioning. Oh, that is just so horrible. I, I don't even want to comment on it. Yeah, there's no comments, and that's not a dig at religion. That's a but there is like, it's a cliche back of, like old older books. They're like they always like, and that person grew up to be. Rory Calhoun. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's the same kind of pattern. It's like, you know, just because that person turned out cool didn't mean that it's not a stupid argument. Yeah, like... And it, Einstein just obviously what... never said that. Like, if I have to say it, like, that like, never happened, clearly. Um, so I think that's, like, everything I want to say about Einstein. He had sex with Shrek. He had sex with um, Gandhi. Probably had sex with Titanic, <laughs> but I didn't really read that one. He, he owned a bunch of liberals. Yeah, he owns some liberals with his, fa- with his facts and logic. I'm sorry it's incredibly offensive and racist, but I'm just like, I'm just reading what's out there and that's what people think about Einstein. <laughs> that's such a bad... It's like a fucking uh, Alex Jones. Like, it's not my theory. It's just uh, it's what's been posted, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's just the facts. <laughs> I'm just reporting news. I'm, in, I'm, I'm a journalist. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of sad in a sense that there was no, like, I couldn't at least find any Einstein fan fiction about him. Like, what I was hoping for is, like, some sort of wholesome Einstein builds a time machine or a giant robot and goes kills Nazis or something mm. like that. Like, that's but kind it, of, that's the Einstein fan fiction that deserves to exist. Whenever, sometimes when I look up fan fiction and stuff, I'm surprised by the, um, by what I don't find, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get you. Yeah, because, like, it's the internet, there's everything out there, but... You think, like, at least, why is there only, like, you know, X amount of stories about this thing, and then they're all about them banging as well? You know what? I think I've talked myself into it. I think that Einstein fan fiction does deserve to exist, and I can't write, but neither can they. So I will write a very poor Einstein fan fiction involving no gay sex and maybe some robots. I want to say the same thing about Socrates, but that's not going to happen, is it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well that's fair i tried to find a fiction on richard Feynman. oh that would have been a good one and i think when i was looking i either didn't find it or it was just about him bang <laughs> yeah but that's basically his life like his yeah. life is kind of stranger than fiction anyway yeah 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 so i've been very very into steven universe lately oh okay yeah, I watch it all like in like two or three days, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so wholesome. Like I can imagine there's a lot of people that despise the show for that for being like so friendly and nice and like inclusive, pleasant <laughs> and inclusive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, for me, it was just like absolute gold, and I love it, and I can't stop singing the songs from it. I've only watched like the first three and a half or four seasons, I think. Oh, okay. It, yeah. um, I like the rest of them. There's like a little bit of a dip for one of the seasons, but beyond that, it's like amazing. Okay. Well, I think I watched it when um, it was still airing. So I watched like the first two episodes of season four. I'm like, okay, I'll wait until it's finished, but I never got back it, back to it yet. Yeah, I'd recommend yeah, it yeah. because the movie just came out and um, mm. it's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, I think. But it's not like only season one's on Netflix. If something's on Netflix, I'm much more likely to watch it because I can just like whip it up on the TV. But if I have to yeah. make effort to watch something, I'm like, ugh. Like, I had to. I have to confess, I was watching it off a streaming site by already hey, first hey, season. Hey, hey, hey! You were watching it in a very legal, re- legal way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was watching it. I rephrased that. I was watching Steven Universe in an incredibly legal way, where I had to download the files from a website, and whatever <laughs> server they were hosting it on, just like stalled for ten minutes per episode at the start, and then downloaded quite slowly. 
Okay. So it was a lot of work. Like it could be thirty minutes or forty minutes to get like an episode, which is like ten minutes long. Oh Jesus! How did you manage to sit through because that? The, I the power of friendship kept me alive. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, it was. I what can I say? I really liked the show. I mean, that's a test of devotion right there. So what am I into lately? What are you into lately? <sighs> so I <clears throat> I've been inspired by a few Simpsons podcasts. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm trying to watch and personally rate every single episode of The Simpsons right now. <laughs> <laughs> so from what I could tell, you're about two hundred episodes in. Yeah, there's there's a for the people who don't know there's there's about six hundred and thirty episodes of The Simpsons currently until well they're starting season thirty one by the time this episode comes out so there'll be more. Oh, okay. and <laughs> there's only about I want to say a hundred good ones. <laughs> Maybe the first, like, ten seasons have a good bit mm-hmm. of merit to them. Yeah. And then after that, it decreases quite sharply. Yeah, it does. Uh, but I think, um, you know when you go into a swimming pool and then you just slowly adjust to the temperature? I I've been watch- feeling. Yeah, I've been watching so many bad episodes that <laughs> some of them I feel like, oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really sorry about that because, like... <sighs> Yeah, I'm really sorry about that because you're going to need to like go back and like cleanse your palate with some good Simpsons episodes every now and again. I, I, I do, I do mix though. I watch good ones and then bad ones. Well, I watch for like four bad ones and then watch one good one kind of thing. But now sure. I really, really appreciate the good ones. You know what I mean? Well, I would say like you're a scholar in a rare field because you're someone who actually watched the Simpsons after the good episode. So, <laughs> what do you have to say to people about it? Like, is there any anything worth watching in the later seasons? Is it something that should just be left in the dark? Oh, there is, but uh, you don't ask. You don't go to me. Go, go, go! Look up those Simpsons podcasts because they're they're the people who knows what they're talking about. <laughs> Got you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to plug them, so I'm not going to mention their names. <laughs> that's fair. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, imagine the cheek of me plugging another podcast that's not my podcast on another podcast. <laughs> yeah, that is quite a lot of plugging. But we are mentioning things that we like, so in a sense, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, and then I guess beyond like. So beyond the Steven Universe stuff, I've been playing a lot of RimWorld, like an unfortunately named game, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, why would they call it that? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I can't think of a great reason, because I'm sure there's like equivalent names that are way better. Yeah. Dust World, Outer World, who knows? <laughs> you know, Ass Licker, you know. <laughs> Ass Licker, that would be quite good. <laughs> Ass, Lick- Ass, about- Ass Licker Land. <laughs> But it's like a top-down game um, where you have like colonists that crash land on a planet and you need to build some shelter, uh, store food, get food, grow food, build up defenses from people who try to raid you. And it's not like the creator doesn't see it. Like he describes it as not being a game, but as a story creator, which in a Mm. sense is true because it does deliberately unfair things to you sometimes, like wipes out half your colonists with plague suddenly or spawns like five times more troops than you can defend against that end up burning down your stuff and stealing your favorite colonist well conflict is the essence of drama i guess so <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean that's a recommendation um okay. i've been playing far too much of it because it's dreadfully addictive mm-hmm. i've been playing fire emblem mm. um i'm like 120 hours into it or something oh okay that's pretty nice yeah, that's uh, actually I, quite quick. You only started playing that like about a month ago, right? Yeah, something like that. But <laughs> I've been in it twice. But like, okay. it's I, it's uh, the thing about this game is that there's like, um, imagine like Harry Potter, where you have four different schools. There's like three different uh, houses you can choose. Okay, and then they all unveil different part of the story, that kind of thing. Right, so you kind of have yeah. to do three playthroughs to uh, finish the game. Yeah, but really you have to do four because one of them is like, uh, one of them splits into two different paths halfway through as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so best of luck finishing that, I guess. Yeah, but then <laughs> I was on my way to finish it a third time and then they uh, have a new update and they basically release a new difficulty level. And that right. new difficulty level destroyed me so hard up but like i've spent like two hours to beat one level that kind of level because i'm not very good at strategy games but i just love this game okay yeah uh so are you like true to game on that difficulty level yet are you still playing oh i'm still playing i'm still on like the first 20 percent of the game after like 15 hours yeah still super hard difficulty so that's still quite good yeah but i'm also a bit lazy i haven't played it <laughs> for like a week <laughs> now <laughs> 
um do you have any other like personal like any other like stuff you're really into at the moment no not really you um it's just a brief honestly, way anyway honestly it's just rain world and steven universe those <laughs> compose most of my days fair enough okay so should we end this podcast by plugging our podcast oh we do have a podcast yes. uh yeah let's do it you do it because so- um <laughs> funny thing i'm the host today but usually rushing's the host <laughs> of our podcast i think you did a good job <laughs> yeah. so uh you you bring you 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 tried the show for us yeah absolutely so um we're the hosts of the great scientist podcast which is a podcast going through a list of the great scientists of history as determined by the scientist list from civilization five and that is a concept we came up with one day in dublin but it's been <laughs> yeah, quite a good uh... challenge Civilization is a video game, by the way, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a random video game. And I w- was kind of curious to go through the history of science. And it's like, well, there's a list of scientists. That's one way to do it. Yeah. And some of them are quite unlikely. We wouldn't have chosen them otherwise. I guess we shouldn't go through too much of a recording schedule. But we've we've done quite a few episodes uh, covering mm-hmm. the, the early history of science and some semi-mythical Chinese goddess. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's pretty good. So if you want to subscribe to our podcast, have a look for The Great Scientist Podcast and your favorite podcast player. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's us then. Uh, just want to thank Alex and Ryan for like, uh, inviting us to host this. It's been really fun. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really I wish them. It. I, I I wish them the best of luck in their whatever they're doing. You know what do I say? Death ray, yeah. Uh yes, they're death ray. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm glad I didn't blur out. You know, fart machine. You know, that's what they're really doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just make sure to get high quality lens for your laser. Uh, you don't want it to burn out with all the power going through it. <laughs> um, um, best of luck with that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Goodbye, I suppose. Yeah, uh, I look forward to them coming back.